Alrighty, and welcome back to RV Soft Grid. Today we have a 2025 Paradigm. We get got done with the installation a few months ago. They brought it back for us to do a little bit more work. And so we're going to go over this whole Victron system. This RV is completely off grid. We're gonna dive into that. If you watched my last video on whenever I installed my dad's 24 volt Victron system, we're gonna dive into a little bit more details on this guy, and this is a 48 volt system. So, let's get started. So these owners came to me and they said, hey, we wanna be able to run both of our air conditioners at the same time. And so I said, okay, you can absolutely do that. And uh, they wanted a little bit more power than what a typical Victron 3000 watt inverter would get them. So the Victron inverter is a 3000 watt multi-plus to uh, 2X120. It does a really good job running one air conditioner, one typical Coleman Mach air conditioner, which takes about 1500 watts. If you started up your second air conditioner, let's say let's, hey man, I wanna run both air conditioners because 1500 plus 1500, 3000, we're still good. Uh, honestly, those, Whenever you run both air conditioners, it'll overheat your inverter pretty fast. And so then the whole thing will shut down for a few minutes till you let it cool off. So it does really good running one air conditioner plus all your other stuff in your RV. So if you wanna be able to run both of your air conditioners, I always suggest that people get two inverters. So these are the Victron MultiPlus 2 5,000 watt inverters. Now this system is a 48 volt system. And uh, on my last video, my dad's is a 24 volt system. So we're gonna dive into the details of what are the pros, why would you go with a 24 volt system versus a 48 volt system. So we're gonna start with our solar panels. It's always a good place to start. Alrighty, so we are up here on the roof and we installed nine panels and each panel is 315 watts. And so the reason I really like these solar panels is because you can put them, they don't overhang the roof, uh, they're 66 inches long and 39 inches wide. So it makes it really good to put one solar panel on one side of the air conditioner and to put another solar panel on the other side of the air conditioner. Now, the way I hook these up is that we have nine panels. If we just connected them all in series, our voltage would be super high and our Victron charge controller can only take so much voltage. So what we had to do is that we put three in series, another three in series, and another three in series. Then we put those in parallel and came down with our wire to our charge controller. And so we have the front one, the one right behind that, and that one that are all in series. These three are all in series, and these three are all in series. Now, whenever, there's a few reasons why we do that in addition to a, to fit the parameters of our charge controller. So whenever you have uh, connect solar panels in series, they will act like one solar panel. And if a shadow comes over one of those solar panels, then the overall output of the entire array of those three that are connected drops. And so since we have, you know, air conditioners up here and different things that do require, that do cast a shadow on these solar panels, the max, we want to maximize the amount of power that gets put into those batteries. So that's why we broke these up the way we did so that they're all not stringed up together, cast a shadow, then we're not getting a whole, whole lot of power. So that's why we broke them up. And so let's look at how we actually secure these onto the roof. What we do is we get super strut, and this is super strut. We cut them in one foot sections. And then we drill, up, drill our holes, put die core under that, put it on our super strut piece onto the roof, 
and put lag screws on top of that and then put die core over that. So the reason is, is we just want to sandwich in that die core so there's no leaks. And in the three years I've been doing this, I haven't had a single person call me saying that their roof has leaked. So I really like this system. So this is our super strut. We also make our own brackets where we get angle aluminum. And uh, these are held together with a super strut nut on the underside and uh, self-tapping rivet screws that go into our panel. Now let's say that you need to service your roof or something like that where you want to get your roof off. There's a lot of companies out there that they just put, they just screw these panels just directly onto the roof, put die core over them, send them out the door, okay, we're done. But the problem happens that if you do have a leak or do need to move your solar panel over to get to whatever underneath, then you had to uproot that whole solar panel, like unscrew it from the roof, then you have more holes in there, and then and I just don't like that personally. But with this system, if you ever need to move these panels, you just take these self-tapping screws out. Each one has, is connected with uh, four of these brackets. You just take those out, move your panel off to the side, do your servicing, then you can put it back, and zzz, 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 put it all back, and then you're back in business. So that's why I like this system. Uh, of mounting onto the roof. Okie dokie, we are back down here by our Victron equipment. And so from our roof, we come down with our two solar wires. Uh, they're 10 gauge wires. They come all the way down to this on off breaker. Now, just like in my last video, I was talking about a MC4 inline fuse. These are also protected with a with an inline fuse. That way, if anything crazy goes on with your solar panels, then that fuse will blow. And so those are super easy uh, to swap out. Just clip, clip in and out. And those, you can get those on Amazon as well. So from our solar panels, they come down to this on-off breaker. From this on-off breaker, it goes over to our Victron MPPT 250 slash 100. And so what those numbers mean is that it can bring in 250 volts and output to a maximum of 100 amps. Now this is a, since this is a 48 volt system, um, it's being converted over to 48 volts so it can flow into our batteries. It's actually around 54 volts to flow into our 48 volt batteries, but that's kind of just all in the details of like the, just the chemistry of why you need to charge at, you know, 54 uh, volts versus 48. All right, so we also have our Victron Servo GX, which is right in here. Now your Servo GX is the brains behind everything. So from our uh, MPPT, we have a cable connected to that. Our inverters are connected to that. Our battery is connected to that. So it gets all the information and then it sends it to our Victron Touch 70 that's inside where you can monitor everything that's going on with your system. What's also connected to that is that is a generator auto start. So what you do is we install these and you can set these parameters to say, let's, run, let's say you're running your air conditioner all night long, you can set it to turn for your generator to turn on at a certain level. So you run your air conditioner all night long until it hits whatever threshold. I always suggest about you know 20%. Then it'll kick on your generator, and uh, and then it will start uh, providing power through your inverters, which will charge your batteries and over to your air conditioners so those will keep running and so that's what a generator auto start does so let's talk about the 48 volt system and your current 12 volt batteries people ask me like oh are you going to pull out the 12 volt battery and put in um, a 48 volt battery so the answer is no what we do is the since the victron system is a completely separate system from everything else that's already connected inside your RV. 
you need a 12 volt system inside your RV for your LED lights, for possibly your slides, for maybe your refrigerator if it's 12 volt. Uh, there's different things that run on 12 volt. So we can't just take out the 12 volt battery and replace it with a 48 volt battery because that's that would just really screw up the system. It's not designed to do that. Uh, so we did leave their 12 volt battery here and just install her the whole 48 system completely separate from their 12 volt system. All right, so now we're going to move up into our talk about our batteries. So we have two cables, a red and a black, that are going from our links power in down here all the way up to our battery links power in. Now all of these batteries that are over here, we have four batteries. Now each battery is a 48 volt, 100 amp hour battery. A better way to think of these is that a 48 volt, 100 amp hour battery is the same power as a 12 volt, 400 amp hour battery. So essentially they have 1600 amp hours worth of battery at 12 volts. It's just easier to think of things in terms of 12 volt whenever we're talking about batteries, banks. So anyway, so all of these batteries come over and are connected to this guy right here. And each one of these batteries also has one of those mega fuses. So um, whenever we are plugged into shore power, what's gonna happen is that from our shore power, it goes to the automatic transfer switch. From our automatic transfer switch, it comes up to this breaker. From this breaker, comes over to our 48 volt multi plus twos. From here, it will go out and it's connected to our main breaker panel. Now these multi pluses also are chargers. So these will charge your battery even whenever you're, you know, whenever you're plugged into shore power and it'll charge your batteries whenever you are boondocking through your solar. So one last thing is people ask me about cooling, about fans. So the way I like to think of this is I imagine that you are out in the desert and we need to cool off these inverters because these inverters will, will overheat. And so if we just have them in a tight compartment with no ventilation, what will happen is they're trying to keep cool. They'll just keep sucking in the same hot air and uh, puffing out even hotter air and sucking it back in and the whole thing will uh, will just overheat and your inverter will shut down and you'll be totally screwed for a while. So um, I like to ventilate these as much as I can. So the way that I typically set these up is that I have a vent that is connected from inside, plates into this compartment and which, and also a vent that goes into this compartment It'll blow hot air out through this computer fan right here. As if you were in a desert and it's 100 degrees outside, you turn your air conditioner on, it cools down to 70. What's gonna happen with this fan, since it's sucking air, is it's gonna pull your 70 degrees that's inside your RV through this compartment, which is starting to get heated up because your inverters create heat, and then it's gonna get expelled to the outside. And so this compartment should just be about like 10 degrees, like 10 degrees higher than what's actually inside your, your RV. So if your RV is cool, then this fan will suck in air and keep this solar compartment nice and cool as well. Okay. All right, so 48 volt systems versus 12 volt systems. So the reason uh, people ask me, hey, what are the benefits between a 48 volt system versus a 12 volt system. So a 48 volt system is much more efficient than a 12 volt system. With a 12 volt system, you have to use thicker wire and it can you know, create heat and then you lose electricity and um, efficiency through that wire. And so your overall output, is, well, the wattage is gonna be lower. 
with a 48 volt system, your volts are higher and your amps are lower. You can get away with smaller, using smaller wire and uh, not create the resistance like you would in a 12 volt system. You also, with the amount of solar that they have up on their roof, you would need about three charge controllers in a 12 volt system versus a 48 volt system, we only need one charge controller. And each charge controller is about eight or $900. So you save a lot more money and it's more efficient whenever you go with a 48 volt system. All right, so that's it for this Alliance paradigm and how this off-grid system works. Victron is incredible. I hope this information was helpful for you and we will see you next time. Yeah, Victron does not sponsor me.